Until his demise over his tax affairs, Nadim Zahawi's career was a classic rags-to-riches story. From child refugee who spoke no English to multi-millionaire businessman and senior cabinet minister. But his wealth has proved to be his undoing. Born in 1967, Mr Zahawi and his family fled Saddam Hussein's regime in Iraq. Well, I think this country um, has given me everything. Uh, I have uh, lived the British dream. I came here uh, at the age of 11, couldn't speak a word of English, um, head at the back of the class, okay, and of course very quickly learnt to read and um, speak the language, but actually think in the language, dream in the language. Um, and I want to deliver the opportunity for every uh, child in our country, every family. In 2000, he founded the polling company YouGov with the help of his father. And it was his father's shares that landed him in the tax dispute that has cost him his job. Deem Sahawi. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My Elected MP for Stratford-on-Avon in 2010 as the UK's first Kurdish-Iraqi MP, Mr Zahawi soon made his mark in the Commons. And cut through the bureaucracy and nonsense and fly the flag of England over Downing Street for the duration of the World Cup. Yeah. Uh, for the EMA debate today, historically they have been vexed about how to pay. For the but he hit the wrong note a year later when his musical tie went off during his own speech. Debate. Oop, I apologise. Um, As a junior minister, in 2018 Mr Zahawi survived controversy over attending a men-only President's Club dinner. Mr Zahawi, could you give us a comment on why you attended the dinner? where hostesses suffered sexual harassment. Young ladies' hostesses um, uh, that you know, came round each table, which made me feel incredibly uncomfortable, which is why I you know, um, left uh, the uh, dinner. But it was as vaccines minister during the Covid pandemic that Mr Zahawi made his name. And welcome to Downey Street for today's coronavirus briefing. And emerged as a Tory rising star. And today, I can confirm we've reached the milestone of three in five, three in five of all adults getting the protection of a second dose. His impressive media performances earned him promotion to Boris Johnson's cabinet as education secretary. Then, when Rishi Sunak abruptly quit as chancellor in July last year, he was handed the treasury. But only two days after his appointment, he called for Mr Johnson to resign. <laughs> when Mr Johnson quit, Mr Zahawi stood for the Tory leadership. Good evening, Birmingham. What a great privilege it is uh, for me to be here tonight on home turf. Two candidates will be eliminated. Jeremy Hunt and Nadim Zahawi. But he dropped out early, along with Jeremy Hunt, who's now Chancellor. It was during that contest that questions were first raised about Mr Zahawi's tax affairs. But he came out fighting. Clearly being smeared, I was being told that, that the serious fraud office, that the National Crime Agency, the HMRC are looking uh, into me. I've, you know, I'm not aware uh, of this. I will, I've always declared my taxes, I paid my taxes in the UK. Uh, I will you know, uh, answer any questions HMRC has uh, 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 of me. Have you been honest about your tax affairs, Mr Zahawi? But after spells as Cabinet Office Minister under Liz Truss and Tory Chairman under Mr Sunak, he now says he made a careless and not deliberate error in his tax affairs. I think the significance is that he had a lot of tax that he should have paid and he didn't pay it. He's never explained why. And instead of explaining, he resorts to lawyers, he resorts to denials, while secretly behind the scenes sending accountants to negotiate a deal with HMRC. That's not something a senior politician should be doing. Mr Zahawi has paid the price for what Labour has called a murky affair. But a politician who began his life under the tyranny of Saddam Hussein will regard his demise as a setback and not the end of his political career. John Craig, Sky News.